Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd So some of my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. This is a request that came in through our website and it was requested for the archways throw in order to demonstrate this and how this is done. So today that's what we're gonna get ourselves involved with today. So I'm gonna show you a little swatch on how this is done because once you see it it's actually like a grid and then you're just gonna trace it with a quick little border. So let's change our sizes. So if we wanted to change the size and you wanted to make it bigger or smaller it's in multiples of three plus two. So if you're chaining you're gonna go one, two, Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Hold it up to something that you want or just take it to a measuring tape if you wanna get a certain size and then once you're happy with that just add two more chains and then you will have that particular one. Once we get ourselves started then we're just going to repeat rows two and three 69 times or until you get to 51 inches or to any size that you would like and then once we get that done then we're just gonna do our border. So without further ado this is using Red Heart Super Saver Jumbo and it's only two skeins for doing that. That's that really really big balls and we're gonna be using a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook in order to begin. So let's begin and let me just show you a quick demonstration. So let's begin and you can chain 161 if you wanna match exactly what that pattern is and if you wanna change the size the designer has given that to you. So it's in multiples of three plus two. So you go one, two, three and then one, two, three, one, two, three and then just keep doing that until you get to the size that you really want. So once you have the size that you really want so you take it to a measuring tape or you can lay it on your sofa or your bed or whatever you want and just add two more chains and that will take it and bring balance back to your particular project so that the stitches will stay lined up. So without further ado let's begin into row number one. Just put me on pause, get your chain done and let's begin. So let's begin row number one. You're gonna go second chain from the hook so one and two. This time I usually always recommend turning it over and get the back hump of the stitch. If you do that in this particular sample you'll notice that it will really stand off and not be nice and close. So what I want you to do is that when you go second chain from the hook just do it regularly and make sure when you stick it into the chain work that you have at least two of those lines of the chain on top. And then yarning over pulling through and then pull through. So then that keeps it nice and close. You're then going to chain four. So one, two, three, four and skip only two chains. So one, two and go to the third and single crochet. And you're gonna do that if you're doing it to the size that it's stating. It says to, that you will do that 53 times. So one, two, three, four skipping only two, one, two, go to the third. You're gonna do that all the way across. So one, two, three, four skipping two go to the third and then once you get to the other side if your numbers are right so one, two, three, four the last stitch skipping two will be the last single crochet. If you get all the way across and you're missing a stitch just throw something in there. Just fake it. Okay or you can pull it apart. It, it's up to you. So you're gonna turn your work and let's do row number two and three which is the repeat for this whole thing. So we're now going to start row number two. So chain three which will count as the first double crochet and in this chain four space you want to apply two single crochet. So one and two and that's all you're gonna do. You're then going to only chain one and then in the next chain four space two single crochet. So one and two and then chain one and then jump to the next space one and two and then chain one and, and then finally in, come into the last space when you get there. So one and two just like that and then you're just gonna immediately double crochet into the last one. Sorry I just had to look at the instructions for a moment. So just double crochet in the last single crochet stitch. So you will notice because you chain four this wants to ramp up so it wants to go high. So that's why we're double crocheting in the beginning as well as the end of the row. So that was row number two. Let's turn our work and begin row number three. So row number three kind of starts off a little unique. So let's chain one and you want a single crochet between the space of this double crochet and the single crochet and just single crochet there. And remember how we chain four? We're gonna do that again. So one, two, three, four and come into this chain one space and single crochet and then chain four 
and then come into the next chain one space. And you're gonna do that all the way across. This is row three. So one, two, three, four. And eventually you'll come all the way to the other side. And in the other side, what we need to do is that we need to just chain four when we get there. And so we just chain four. So we're just going to go and single crochet into the top of the turning chain. So we're not going between the space of that chain and the single crochet when we get there. So even though we started at that moment on the other side, we're not finishing that way. So let's begin row number two again. Do you remember how to do it? Let's begin. Chain three. So one, two, three. And in the chain four space, you're gonna single crochet. So one and two. Then chain one. Come to the next chain four space and put two single crochets. And then chain one and then two single crochets. And you're gonna do that all the way across to the other side. When you get the last two single crochets in there, just going to single crochet, or sorry, double crochet into the single crochet where you started. And that's it. Then you begin row number three again. So chain one and you're gonna single crochet into the space between the double crochet and the, and the single. So single crochet there and then chain four. So one, two, three, four and then come into the space. So the spaces will always line up with each other if you keep on doing this right. And so you wanna continue to repeat round, uh, rows number two and three until you get to the set dimensions of either 51 uh, inches or as long or short as you want it to go. But eventually the party will run out and you will have to finish. So when you come out to the other side, it's just one single crochet into the turning chain like that. So let's review on how to do the border. So this is what it's gonna look like. So it's like a mesh. So let's get ourselves started. So I just finished and I'm on the end of row number three. So we're gonna turn our work and begin the border. So notice that um, I did not fasten off. So I wanna get myself into the space here. So I'm just gonna slip stitch over first to get myself into that space and then I'm gonna chain three. And in the same space I wanna put in two more double crochet. So with the chain three counting as a double crochet and these two just consider that three double crochets in that space. You're going to then jump into the next space and you're gonna do this all the way across is that each one of these are gonna have three double crochets in each of these chain four spaces. And you'll do that until you turn the corner. So let me do that and just keep doing this. Put me on pause now and then we'll review on how to turn once we get there. So we're in the last space here. So we're gonna turn our corner. So we're gonna chain two and in the same space we're gonna apply three more double crochet in there. That's really easy. It's almost like a granny square. So I'm coming to the space before the end. So you will take your time getting there. And so you just go right into a space itself and then chain two and then turn. So just put in three more double crochets in that same space. Now you're gonna treat this like it was the top. So just come into the next space and put in your three double crochet and you're gonna do that all the way across your bottom. So eventually you'll hit your last space before you have to turn again. So you're gonna put in your three first chain two and then three double crochet in. So then you just work your way up the spaces and then just end up meeting back at the very beginning. So in the very beginning we started off in the space. So we started off here so we're gonna finish off in the same space. And then chain two and then just join it to the top of the first chain three. And then that will conclude that. So you've got that going all the way around. Let's begin round number two. 
So round number two for the border you're just gonna chain up one and apply one single crochet in each of the stitches. So now that we have it established all the way around it's just a matter of following it. So round number two is about single crocheting and when you get to a corner we're only gonna apply three single crochet there and I'll be there in just a moment. So the three single crochet allows you to turn your work. So here's the one, so here's the space. So it's gonna be three single crochets. So one, two, three. See so you get a nice corner there and then continuing along. You're just gonna single crochet in each. Do that all the way around for round number two and then we have one more round after this. When you get all the way around you're just gonna put in your three single crochets in that corner because you started on the stitch after the corner. And so you'll slip stitch into that last one. So round number three, the final of this border is that you are just going to um, slip stitch in each of the rounds. So starting in the next one just going in and slip. When you do a slip stitch just provide a little bit of extra slack. Slip stitching can be a little bit tight. So anybody that's familiar with crochet would know that. And what this is doing is it's making the last stitch kind of lean up on itself like this. Do you see the difference? And so you'll do that all the way around and when you get all the way around you're just gonna slip stitch to the very first one and then weave in your ends. I'm gonna leave that information for you to be able to do. Um, this is an easy level to, uh, to, uh, to accomplish. Remember when you're changing out your yarns just use a tapestry needle to weave in the work. Uh, just go back and forth a total of three times and therefore it'll be awesome in order for you never to have tail ends falling out of your work. So you can see as I'm working my way it looks really neat when you finish it off that way. Let me just do a quick demonstration just to make sure that you get it. So you'll go all the way around and you have your tail ends. So if you have any tail ends you wanna deal with just simply just put it onto a hook or sorry a needle. This is a wool needle. People ask me what it is. That's what it is. So turn it to the back side of the work. Stay away from the edge. Just go up underneath the stitches. So when you go through just kind of peek it on the back side. So just go once, twice and three times. So just take your time doing that and if you go back and forth a total of three times you will never have to worry about your tail ends coming out because it's pretty much impossible to get out. So make sure <laughs> that's something you want. Any yarn tails that you ended up with along the way also do the same thing. And this is the archways and if you look at it there's your arches. Have a good one. We hope to see you again really soon.